Ghost of Tsushima is arriving on June the 26th. And we know that because of a new trailer which was launched yesterday, which gives us a look at the story. And there's also some special editions of the game, and the game is ordered for open for pre-order now. And we're going to discuss it because there's some things that we can glean from there that gives us some clues about how the game maybe plays and some progression in the game. But we'll get into that. Here to join me for this ride is Mr. Henry Cooper. Hello. I felt like I probably should say hello in Japanese, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> any, it, any clues down in the comments, please? Uh, well, Konnichiwa isn't Konnichiwa. actually hello i think that specifically means good afternoon well maybe it is afternoon wherever it finds you yeah. konnichiwa so if you're wondering why we're talking about japanese stuff it's because ghost of tsushima is about japan and the quick roundup of what the kind of game is you take control of jin sakai and he's a samurai warrior who has to put his honor aside and learn the way of the ghost he's one of only about 80 samurai who stood against the mongols on the beach of tsushima and the mongols are invading japan first stop tsushima island and he says in the trailer at one point, Honor died on the beach because he's going to have to learn some new unconventional techniques in order to kill all these guys who are invading his home. So Jin, we learn a little bit more in this trailer about him and that he's been trained for a long time by this guy who is his uncle and kind of like a father figure. Now, according to the PlayStation blog, he's trained Jin since childhood in the traditional ways of the samurai and grows increasingly concerned by the tactics Jin starts to adopt as he abandons his teachings and becomes the ghost. It's spooky. So uh, he's going to do some questionable stuff and people might get upset about him, but he's got to do it, man. He's got to do what has to be done. Yeah, breaking the samurai code and um, just to get shit done. Now, there's an implication that there's like the, a main Mongol guy that the object of the game is to try and kill, right? So that's yeah. what he refers to him is, uh, in that part of the trailer as well, isn't he? Yeah, the main villain who we, we've seen glimpses of in other trailers, even in the first trailer, that's a guy called Koten Khan. Khan! And he's just the leader of the Mongol invading force. And the Khans, uh, the most famous one, would be Genghis Khan. He was the progenitor of the, the Mongol uh, Empire and all their world-conquering madness. But this guy, he's fictional, and so is Jin. And everything that happens in the game is based on fictional characters, but inspired by the actual historical event, which was the invasion of Tsushima, which really happened in 1274. Now, if you want some quick numbers about how, how big that invasion was, the estimates of Japan's forces were between 2,000 to 4,000 but numbers on that vary. So that's 2,000 to 4,000 soldiers, including samurai and whatnot. Whereas the Mongols had between 28,000 and 30,000, which was a mix of Mongols, some old Chinese, and some Koreans. So they're, they're outnumbered, to say the least. Yeah, by a factor of like 10 to 1. This trailer doesn't really show us much in terms of gameplay. There's a few tiny little brief snippets, in it, but it does give us a bit more of a sense of a story. However, the most interesting stuff that's worth talking about is actually in the different editions and pre-order bonuses that have officially been revealed. So the standard edition which will be about 50 quid will get you the game. Nice. I like to get a game when I pay for a game. The special edition will set you back about 70 quid. That'll get you the game, a fancy steel case, one technique point, so remember that, the charm of Hachiman's favor, remember that, and the hero of Tsushima skin set, which includes a golden mask, body armor, sword kit, horse, and saddle. Do remember we have to remember that, that too? We'll come back to those points. <laughs> the brain's full already, Henry. They're the most interesting stuff. Well, all of that, it does say with a little asterisk that the, that's tied to story progression, so that suggests that it's not a case of exclusivity and that it's more of an early access thing. I don't get why people think people want stuff early. I want to unlock this shit. Or maybe it might be that these things are locked behind after the prologue. So yeah. you get them. They, they are exclusive to this collect, uh, special edition, but you can only access them once the, the, Perhaps, you've done the prologue. Yeah. Uh, you'll also get a digital mini art book. Then there'll be a director's commentary, which again from the PlayStation blog, in which our creative team sits down with a renowned Japanese historian to look at the world of Ghost of Tsushima and how it compares to real life events that inspired it. And a samurai ps4 theme and there's a digital version of that but obviously you don't get the uh, steel case because it's digital and then there's the big one which is the collector's edition which will be about 160 quid and that'll get you all of the above plus uh, a sakai mask with a stand which is the mask the ghost wears and that's made of poly resin but apparently it's not supposed to be worn it's just to look pretty on a shelf a cloth map of tsushima island which looks quite pretty and artistic a sashimono or war banner which is apparently 4.5 feet long so hang that on your wall and to declare war on the Mongol Empire. A furoshiki wrapping cloth, which is what well, it sounds like. It's a cloth that you wrap things in. I mean, again, awesome. it, it looks cool, but I don't know how much practical use it has. And a physical 48-page mini art book, which is the same art book that you'd get digitally, just obviously it's a hard copy. Real thing. And then all pre-orders will also get a Ghost of Tsushima digital mini soundtrack, a Ghost of Tsushima Jin dynamic theme, and a Ghost of Tsushima, who would have known it, Jin avatar. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. That, that is a lot <laughs> of stuff. Bits and bobs. And um, collect 
collector's edition does come with the game. Oh yes, the, wow. the game. The oh game. my goodness, yeah. that is revolutionary. Um, so the key things to remember here, as I've said, are the technique point, the charm, and the cosmetic stuff. So we'll start with the technique point, because that suggests that there's going to be at least some kind of RPG mechanics or character-based progression or like skill unlocks yeah. or something like that. So that's probably, and again this is speculation, it's probably something like a skill tree or item upgrades for new abilities. Yeah, I mean technique point sounds like a currency that you earn, that you can spend on on skills, right? Yeah, through just, XP or something. Exa exactly an open world trope these days. You, you, you come to expect that. You've got open, open world area to explore, you kill stuff, you get XP, you earn a point, or you level up, and then you spend that point on a new ability or something. And that's exactly what this sounds like. And, and that gives us our first clue as to how this game's gonna, gonna really play. I mean, we've, we've, what, we've seen some gameplay, but we don't really know how, how it's gonna be outside of combat, outside of trying to take some Mongols down. Yeah. Like, what it's gonna be just in general as, you know. As a game, as not a, game. A, a tale of this guy killing all the Mongols. But the developers have said that unlocking these new abilities and techniques mirrors the character Jin's journey because he's having to move beyond conventional samurai tactics and tools and kind of methods to find new ways to kill and new ways to stop the Mongols that traditionally the samurai wouldn't actually do. So that, again, that, that, that mirrors that, which I think is quite a good example of a game telling a story in a more specific way than a film could because a film can't give you that same kind of parallelism or juxtaposition or anything like that. Other trailers that we've seen in the past show off a bunch of different things and these could link with the progression and, and whatnot. So yeah, there's a bunch of different swords because he actually carries three at, at once for, for most of the time. Oh God, how many hands does he have? Exactly. He's got his regular katana, which is his main sword, and that's a family heirloom called the Sakai Storm, which actually sounds quite cool and has some lightning bolts on the handguard, which is very dramatic. Like the sound of that. He's also got a sword on his back, just in case uh, anyone wanted to, to be historically inaccurate because apparently no one ever did that because it was yeah. really stupid. And then he's got another short one, which will probably be a dagger or a short sword on his hip by his regular katana. And that could either be, and this is when I did a bit of Googling and Wikipediaing, a wakizashi or a tanto, which is the uh, kind of short sword or a dagger type thing, respectively. We also see him using some smoke bombs for escape, but also he does throw them at people, so it can be used in an offensive as well as defensive way. A rope for grappling and climbing, which is very specifically not a samurai method of doing things. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, something that they try to stress that you learn over time and as a form of adapting. You can see in one of the trailers that he's got throwing knives on his armor, uh, but we don't know if he ever uses them. I don't think we've seen him use them in gameplay, so they might just be, because it looks cool, yeah. but throwing knives would make sense as, a, as an extra weapon. And then there's a, a bow and arrow, which I think we saw him using in the Game Awards trailer which is using fire arrows, so that might suggest using different unlockable arrow types. But one of the other items you get in this special edition thing is the charm of Hachiman's favor. Now I googled Hachiman, and again, according to Wikipedia, Hachiman is basically the god of war in Hinduism and uh, the Shinto religion, but more specifically of archery. So right. if you, with this charm, I mean, my interpretation would be that this will allow you to do more damage with bows and arrows. Yeah, that makes sense, um, judging by those, but that rationale, absolutely. Or perhaps it'd be if you collect different charms, they're your different disciplines. So you get the charm of Hachiman, and then from then on, you can use archery. Yeah. And you get the charm from something else, and from then on, you can use throwing knives or, or bombs or whatever. Now moving on to the cosmetics stuff. The hero of Tsushima set is what you get, which is composed of a golden mask, body armor, sword kit, and a horse, who I learned is called Nobu and interestingly as a little fun fact is the male name meaning trust or prolonged stretch so you're trusting him to take you long distances and I think that's what you want from a horse certainly not the fucking horses in Red Dead which twat you into a tree if you make the slightest mismovement <laughs> and a saddle. And that confirms that all of these things are at least slightly customizable in some way. Mm. I mean, you could just have the default and then all of this extra stuff, but it does suggest to me that there's going to be some form of customization. Yeah, I mean, the, it does say skin set as well, so um, hopefully they're not gameplay altering and they don't give you some sort of buff out the gate, which wouldn't be great. But yeah, if it's just skins, if it's just colours essentially, or just a different look to your outfit that didn't give you any sort of gameplay altering effect, then it's fine, I guess. Yeah, and we've seen him wear the character Jin wear different outfits in the different trailers. There's like a black, lightweight, stealthy armor one, then a full-on samurai armor one, and then the straw hat with baggy trousers, which was in the debut gameplay trailer. However, talking about whether it will impact gameplay, Chris Zimmerman, who is the game's producer, said at E3 2018 that the armor you get, again, just like the items and weapons, mirrors Jin's journey and has narrative value as well as mechanical value. And he says, if Jin's costume, his armor is changing right. um, as, as he evolves. And that's kind of has you know, symbolic meaning, but it also has mechanical meaning. So that does suggest that some armor will 
impact your uh, your gameplay and your yeah. performance. You'll probably, you know, buff your health and whatnot. But there's nothing to suggest that any of this will. So again, we're just speculating. And after all this speculation, the only real gameplay we've seen was at E3 2018, which was coming up two years ago now. And I do wonder if this trailer was supposed to be revealed at PAX East before Sony pulled out because of a mysterious infection that is going around. However, with only three months until release, we've barely seen anything about this game, which is... No, absolutely. And and it's a, a bit of a shame that we didn't get to see more gameplay. There was like little snippets Tiny little bits. in this trailer again. But we want to see more gameplay before... I mean, personally, I want to see more gameplay before I can decide whether yeah. whether it's going to be something I'm really excited about. I do like the look of the the, tra the story. Oh, yeah. The story looks great. The world looks great. Um, it just it just looks like a place that I want to explore and want, yeah. to, want to be very in. Very cinematic, very well like put together and directed with all the leaves flying there's so many leaves yeah there's there's so many reasons to like it but yeah the main reason to like it has not been disclosed yet so it's just like yeah. a, it's still a wait and see although it's like kind of tempered excitement at this point um it's definitely one that that is hugely on my radar yeah. which is why we're talking about it today obviously we wouldn't be talking about it if we weren't that um excited about it but still it's like don't get too excited yeah. yet because we still don't know what it plays like the excitement's right there just but locked behind the fod gates and as soon as they show <laughs> gameplay and if it looks Looks good then the yeah. floodgates can really open and then i'll be very excited i mean it is an open world game who know they might ubisoft the hell out of it and they it could. just have it's just such, such a generic open world thing i mean there's been so many open worlds these days that you, you could easily just get open world fatigue yeah. from playing so many of them so it, it's just a wait and see like hopefully this is unique enough to be able to be interesting beyond the this general tropey open worldy type of stuff yeah and i don't even really know when we should expect to see more gameplay because sony isn't going to e3 so i guess they'll just kind of drop it whenever they fancy. Maybe they'll do another state of play, of play or, something, or something, yeah. But anyway, this game kind of closes out a solid, solid few months for Sony uh, with a five-month slate of uh, very highly anticipated, at least, PS4 exclusives. So in February, we had Dreams. In March, now we've got Neo 2. In April, there's Final Fantasy VII Remake. Then in May, there's The Last of Us 2. And then in June, there's Ghost of Tsushima. So they are closing out the generation with a bang. And I'm not going to try and sound biased here, but Microsoft, where you at? Sony's thrown down the gauntlet. Yeah. They got yeah. five huge titles. That's true. Yeah. I mean, wait till next next yeah. gen generation. Exactly. In in yeah. defense of X Xbox and Microsoft, uh, they'll have a lot of things up their sleeve that within that, you know, 13. Yeah, they've got so many studios, studios now, now, now that they've got. got they've they've definitely got more things to come. But, um, you know, Sony have been quiet for a short while. Their Death Stranding days gone last year, the two big ones from last year. I can't think of any more. But now, you know, the next few months, we've got some absolute, or what should be absolute behemoths yeah. of games, especially Last of Us Part to and we'll wait and see with this Ghost of Tsushima to see if this is going to be and Final Fantasy 7 absolutely massive Neo 2 is highly anticipated as well it's going to be a big quarter for Sony that's for sure so there you go what do you think of the trailer are you excited are you not are you going to be buying this game are you going to be getting any of the collector's edition are you interested in any of that tat let us know down in the comments below I've been Gareth Evans I've been joined by Mr Henry Cooper we'll see you in the next video until then bye for now